Hey guys, today we are going to look at geometric sequences. We're going to answer the question, what is a geometric sequence and what is the recursive formula for a geometric sequence? So what we're going to do is graph the points in this table and see if we notice any patterns in the table and in the graph. So let's start by graphing the points. The first one is 1, 1. The second point is 2, 2. The next point is 3, 4. And then the last point we're going to graph is 4. Four, eight. So as I'm looking at the numbers, the terms here, from 1 to 2, I would add 1, or you could say multiply by 2. From 2 to 4, I would add 2 or multiply by 2. And then from 4 to 8, I would add 2 or multiply add four or multiply by two. So it looks like the pattern here is not addition this time, it's multiplication. That was the thing that stayed constant. We were adding by different numbers, but the multiplication by two remained constant. So the terms multiply by two. And let's take a closer look at this graph. It looks like we are increasing exponentially. We have that exponential curve going on. So that's kind of what a geometric sequence is. They're going to have a common ratio or that constant multiplier. So the common ratio is just the constant multiplier. And it has to be constant. You're going to multiply by the same number throughout the whole sequence. So that's what we're going to look for when we are trying to determine if a geometric sequence is actually geometric. We are trying to find that common ratio or the common multiplier. So to go from 2 to 6, I would multiply by 3. To go from 6 to 18, I would multiply by 3, and then I think 18 times 3 is 54. Let me double check. It is. So is this a geometric sequence? Yes, it is. And our common ratio R would be 3. All right, let's look at number two. Is it a geometric sequence? If so, find the common ratio. So from one to two, I would multiply by two. From two to four, I would multiply by two. And from four to seven, I would not multiply by two. Four times two is eight. So is this a geometric sequence? No, because it does not have the common ratio throughout the whole sequence. All right, then the next one, is it a geometric sequence? If so, find the common ratio. So my numbers are getting smaller this time instead of larger. So that means I'm going to be multiplying by a number less than 1. And I'm having a hard time thinking about what I would multiply to go from 512 to 128. So I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to divide 128 divided by 512. And it looks like I get 0.25 or 1 fourth. So let's see if 1 fourth is going to work as the common ratio here. So 512 times 1 fourth, we know that is 128. Let's see if 128 times 1 fourth will continue. Looks like it does. 128 times 1 fourth is 32. Okay, then let's make sure 32 times 1 fourth should be 8 which it is. So even though it's not an integer that we're multiplying by, we still have a common ratio. So yes, this is geometric and our common ratio is one fourth. All right, now that we know what a geometric sequence is, let's use that common ratio to find the next three terms in the sequence. So from negative 5 to negative 10, or to positive 10, I go from negative to positive. So that means I'm multiplying by a negative here because a negative times a negative would create that positive number. So it's negative 5 times negative 2 that creates that positive 10. And then 10 times negative 2 would create that negative 20. And 20 times negative 2 would create that positive 40. So I want you to notice our terms are what we call oscillating here. 
they go from negative to positive, negative to positive. That's called oscillating since they are going back and forth. So now that I know that the common ratio is negative two, I can find the next three terms in the sequence. For the next term, I would do 40 times negative two, which is negative 80. Negative 80 times negative two is positive 160, and 160 times negative two is negative 320. All right, number five, let's find the next three terms in the sequence. So I can see my numbers are getting smaller. So that means that my common ratio is gonna be less than one. And I'm gonna go backwards to try and figure out the common ratio. I'm gonna do 500 divided by 2,500. And I get 0.2 or 1 fifth. So I'm multiplying by 1 fifth. Let's make sure that that's what it is. 500 times 1 fifth should give us 100, which it does. And then 100 times 1 fifth should give us 20, which it does. So this time our common ratio is 1 fifth. So I'm going to do 20 times 1 fifth to find the next term. And 20 times 1 fifth is 4. So the next term is 4. And then I will do 4 times 1 fifth. And I can put the decimal or we can put the fraction. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to put the fraction 4 fifths. And then I need to do 4 fifths or 0.16 times 1 fifth. And I get point. Oh, somehow I got an extra line in there. Okay, four fifths times one fifth is what I need next, which is 0.16 or 420 fifths. Okay, then last one, my numbers are staying negative. They're not oscillating like they were on number four. So that means that my common ratio is gonna be positive this time, because I would do a negative times a positive to get a negative. And negative three times two would create that negative six. Negative six times two would create that negative 12. And then negative 12 times two would create that negative 24. So our common ratio is positive two even though our numbers are negative. So now I'm gonna do negative 24 times positive two to get the next term, which would be negative 48. And then negative 48 times 2 is negative 96. And negative 96 times 2 would be negative 192. So those are geometric sequences. You look for that common ratio, whatever that constant multiplier is. Now we're going to look at recursive formulas of geometric sequences. So let's start with subscript notation. So this is when you have information in the subscript. So A sub N is the term N, that little sub N is telling us the term number. So it's asking us to find the first three terms in the sequence. A1 just means the first term and the first term here is five. A2 is asking for the second term. The second term here would be 15. And then A3 is asking for the third term, which would be 45. Okay, function notation is similar. F of N is the term, and then N tells us the term number. So this one wants us to find the first three terms of the sequence. F of one is just asking for the first term, which would be 0 0.4. F of two is asking for the second term, which would be 1.6. And F of three is asking for the third term, which would be 6.4. So now we can define a recursive formula now that we know what the subscript notation and function notation parts mean. So a recursive formula is going to define the first term. So they'll either tell us A1 or they'll tell us F of one. And then they'll tell us the process for finding the nth term or any term of the sequence using the previous term. So in subscript notation to find any term, we will take the previous term and multiply it by the common ratio. So the common ratio, that times r, that's gonna be the most important part of the formula that's telling us what to multiply by. 
Okay, then same thing over here, function notation to find any term, f of n, we take the previous term, f of n minus one, and we just multiply it by the common ratio. So again, this times r, that's going to be the important information. That's the common ratio, what we will multiply by. So let's practice finding the first four terms of the sequence when we're given a recursive formula. So on number one, it says a n equals three sub a n minus one. So this looks different than up here, but let's think about it. This is just saying the previous term, when we stick a three in front of it, that means times three. So the common ratio is three. And then they told us the first term, it is seven. So since I have the first term and I have the common ratio, now I can build the sequence. I start with the first term, seven, and then I do seven times three, which is 21, and then 21 times three, which is 63, and then 63 times three is 189. Okay, number two, they gave us the sequence in function notation, but they still gave me the same two things I need to build the first four terms of my sequence. They gave me the first term. The first term is 80. And then this formula is telling me to find any term. We take the previous term and we multiply it by one half. So our common ratio is one half. So now I can build my sequence. The first term is 80, 80 times 1 half is 40, 40 times 1 half is 20, and 20 times 1 half is 10. All right, number three, we are going to write a recursive formula with subscript notation for this sequence below. So we have to define two things in our formula, the first term and the common ratio. So let's start by identifying those. The first term is 640, and we're in subscript notation, so I'm gonna write it like this. A1 equals 640. And then the other thing that we need to write our formula is the common ratio. So 640 times what would give us 160? Let's work backwards and divide. 160 divided by 640, I get 0.25 or 1 fourth. So common ratio should be 1 fourth. Let's make sure that works throughout the whole sequence. 160 times 1 fourth should give us 40, which it does. And then 40 times 1 fourth should give us 10, which it does. So we just confirmed the common ratio is 1 fourth. So now that I have the first term in the common ratio, I can write my formula. So to find any term, we'll take the previous term and multiply it by the common ratio. So let's write it like this. To find any term, I'm gonna take the previous term, a n minus one, and I'll multiply it by one fourth. So instead of putting times one fourth at the end, I'm gonna make the coefficient one fourth because that's a little more proper. And then the other thing we need, so someone could build a sequence with this formula, is telling them what the first term is. The first term is 640. All right, and on number four, we're gonna do the same thing. We need the first term in the common ratio, but we're gonna write it a little bit differently. We're gonna write it in function notation. So let's start with the first term. The first term is negative 10. And then I need my common ratio. And since my numbers are oscillating from negative to positive, positive to negative, I know that the common ratio is gonna be negative. So let's figure out the negative number that we're multiplying by. To get from negative 10 to 30, I would multiply by negative three. To get from 30 to negative 90, I would multiply by negative three. And to get from negative 90, that's supposed to be a positive, that's a typo to positive 270, we would multiply by negative three. So the common ratio is negative three. So now that I have the first term and I have the common ratio, I can build my formula in function notation just like this. To find any term f of n, we will take the previous term f of n minus one and multiply it by the common ratio. 
So to find f of n, we will take the previous term, f of n minus one, and we'll multiply it by negative three. I'm making the coefficient of the previous term negative three to show that it's multiplied by negative three. And then I just need to define my first term, which is negative 10. 